What's up you guys, this is Nick Vassallo from Global Martial Arts University. This is going to be a solo bag drill class for Muay Thai level 1. So let's begin by doing a warm up. So usually in the warm up what you want to do is just get your blood flowing, okay? If you have a jump rope, you could be skipping rope right now. Uh, in this case we're just jogging in place, nice and easy. <clears throat> just loosening up my legs. You should be moving through a whole body. So just warm up, jog in place. Let me start moving forward and backwards. Forward and backwards. I'll face you guys. Ten more seconds of this and we're going to move side to side. Make sure to control your breathing. Nice, long, even breaths. Now I'm going to move side to side. <clears throat> Try to stay in the balls of your feet. Starting to feel more loose, so I'm just gonna be a little more dynamic about it. You guys do the same thing. Just move around. I just wanna move around. I'm engaging my whole body, right? I'm just moving my feet, but my shoulders, my arms, moving just a bit. Yeah, you can even start engaging and rolling your shoulders as you're moving. Okay, I'm gonna skip. I start to do high knees now. You wanna try and knee at your waist level or above. Move forward and backwards, keep moving. Stay in the balls of your feet. Control your breathing. Nice, deep, long breaths. One more minute, move to twists. Now with these twists, notice that my chest is facing forward, right? But my hips are swinging left and right. So this is really good because when I do my kicks later, be loosened up. When I do my punches and twisting my body, I'll be a little more loosened up. So we're engaging our hips, staying in the balls of your feet and twisting. I'm using my arms to counterbalance, almost like I can do a roundhouse kick. I'm chopping as I kick or chopping as I twist. Last 10 seconds. All right, so we're gonna now stretch it out, start with our heads, go all the way down to our toes. So start your necks first, look up and down. For a deeper stretch, you can actually pull down just a bit and resist, push up and resist. Now left and right like you're saying no. Three more minutes. Saying no. For a deeper stretch, push and resist. Go to each side, push and resist. Now ear to shoulder. Nice and easy. You can pull down and resist just a bit. And same thing, pull down and resist just a bit. Now let's do some rolls, half circle rolls. Keep your chin tucked. Feel your neck getting longer and longer. Your head is nice and heavy. Just loosening up that neck. We'll do back half circle rolls. And full rotations. Nice big rotations. Go both directions now. Good. Shoulder shrug forward and back. All right, let's open up our chest. Big circles. Big circles. Both ways. All right, nice loose spaghetti arms that we're going to twist. Twist.
twist from the bottom of your toes to the top of your head, like you're a giant towel and you're squeezing yourself, squeezing the water out of that big towel. Good. Feet kind of wide apart, we're gonna reach up now. Inhale, exhale, drop it down. Release all that tension in your lower back. Rest your fingertips in the ground. We're gonna walk it to the left and bend our right knee slightly. We're gonna walk it to the right and bend our left knee slightly. Keeping the other leg straight. Go to the left again. Now straighten both legs. Breath here, go to the right. Breath here, go to the center and the middle for a deeper stretch. Left foot back. Try to make a straight line from your left shoulder to your left ankle. And we're gonna push back on that heel to stretch the calf. Good, switch. Twenty more seconds. Good. Feet together now. Spider-Man or frog squat. Hips should be pretty loose. Keep them open. We're gonna roll it up. Reach up. Just lean. All right. Good. So the next uh, next drill we're gonna do is just some uh, shadow boxing. So we're gonna try and incorporate the movement we've been we've been doing, we've been learning straight movements and straight punches. So a lot of times when I see shadow boxing, people are just standing there punching, but you have to move around too. So we're gonna start with our footwork and then slight, or start incorporating some punches. I'll move around the space and I'll make sure you're facing the same way I am so you guys can follow along with me, okay? <clears throat> Here we go. So first thing you wanna do is just keep, keep your hands up, make sure you're being in your Muay Thai stance, nice and wide. Okay, we're just moving around. You can either pretend that there's someone that's coming back at you and you're backing away or you're following someone, okay? It's like a dance. Right now, I'm just making little squares, right? You should be hearing some sliding. That sliding is good. There's a leader and there's a follower. Leader and a follower, okay? And everything's really small, efficient steps. I'm not exploding or doing big movements. I'm just getting used to moving, okay? So now I'm actually going to have you guys face the same way I am. You guys can follow me and replicate what I'm doing, okay? My shoulders are relaxed, my chin is tucked, okay? And I'm just moving around. You can mix it up, just like you're uh, in a sparring scenario. You can imagine that there's someone that's coming after you, and you're, you're, you're going after them, but you're being dynamic, you're not being predictable, right? You're moving all around, you're doing combinations of footwork. You can go forward, backward, left, forward again, right? And just stay loose, stay relaxed. Make sure you're not crossing your feet, okay? No crossing your feet, you're not walking. Okay, you're maintaining your stance at all times. Now I'm gonna start throwing a punch out there, right? Just a straight punch. You're moving around. Stay engaged. Nice and balanced, okay? Do a push kick here and there, maybe? I'm incorporating some head movement in there, which we're gonna work on in these lessons. So you're moving forward, backward, using your punches. Maybe you can do some flurries. Breathe. Hands always up. If your hand isn't punching, it's defending. Moving in straight lines. Every time you throw a jab, once you step forward into it, move. We're almost there. 10 seconds left. Here's jab cross to the end. 
When you jab cross, have nice long arms. Bring your fist back to your chin. Three, two, one. All right, guys. So um, the next round, we're working on the heavy back. Let's work first just in our jab, okay? Um, it's gonna be a shoulder burner, but I just wanna warm up my jab so it's nice and tight, nice and long, being defensive and offense at the same time. All right? Get in your stance. Three minutes, here we go. So I'm going high, going low. Sometimes I might fake high and go low. And beware of the bag. Okay, so I'm moving around the bag, not just staying in one place. If the bag swings, good. Get out of the way or stop it. Right? I'm going to stop the bag when it swings back at me. Like it's an opponent coming at me, I'm stopping them. I can do a headshot, swing the bag right to the body. When you shoot the jab off, some people actually like to. Throw the jab from the hip, because it's hard to see, okay? I want you to mix it up. Don't always throw it from one place. You can keep it back at your chin every time, or you can do from your chin, then back down to your hip. It's harder to read that way, okay? Now notice I'm always moving around the bag. I'm not crowding the bag, right? The jab is a long range weapon. It's like I'm fencing someone to poke them with a the stick. So I'm maintaining this safe distance. And I'm kind of probing at the bag, probing at my target, probing at my opponent, okay? Waiting for an opening or using the jab to set up something else, okay? Most of these combinations and power strikes are going to be set up from the jab. For a power jab, what you can do is actually load your left shoulder, like I'm doing a bench press, where I can throw a power jab. You can also angle my left shoulder so instead of it being in the front, it's in the rear to throw a power jab. Lastly, notice you can hear me exhaling with each punch of exhaling, letting up this tension, also getting a little bit more speed and power. Don't stay in one place, don't jab in one place. I'm moving all around the bag with my feet and my jab. My jab is targeting high low. You can go high low medium too, high or high medium low, just to get some variety. If you're a lefty, it'll look like this. Later on, we'll work on switching stances. And why sometimes it might be a good idea to switch the lead part of your body, most notably your jab. That's orthodox. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, so the jab is really good for that. Just kind of probing like a dentist would probe, um, looking for a cavity. Now I'm probing, looking for a strike, a big strike. So in this case, I'm gonna probe to load up my cross. Okay, we're gonna start using our rear, our rear strike now, rear straight strike, rear straight punch. Now, um, good thing to try and do is not throw a million straights. Okay, it takes longer to get there, it's easy to read. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probe mostly, but when I see an opening, I let up my power straight, okay? So once again, it's not something you want to spam. I'm not going to sit there oh, and throw up right hand over right hand. But I want to be a surgeon with it. It's like a spice. It's like a, a, a delicate spice that if I, I don't want to overuse and, and make it stale, right? Sometimes you can't have pizza and pepperoni every night. That taste would get stale. So I'm going to wait around. Maybe once a week we have pizza night. So maybe every 10 jabs, I have my straight, okay? And the straight's really good at actually stopping someone from coming at you. Someone's coming at me, guns blazing, swinging. You want to stop them in their path, 
Right down the middle of the body. Straight right down the middle of the body. And you can pretend like you're a, a pitcher. Like in baseball, pitchers will throw a changeup and then a fastball. So your changeup can be this really kind of like defensive and just uh, gauging your distance kind of jab. And then, whap, fall the fastball right here. Right down the middle. Whap. It's good to fake or go high to jab, then immediately go low with the body. And same thing conversely. You can go low with the jab, high with the cross to the head. I'll switch left to now so the lefties can follow. So I'm keeping that left nice and tight, right against my chin. That right is just pecking away at the target when I'm ready. Got my power. So back to orthodox. Southpaw. Orthodox. When you feel that cross, most common mistake I see is people lift their feet off the ground. Don't do that. We do that for a different uh, uh, type of cross called Superman Punch. So in this case, I want you guys to stay nice and grounded in case we have to unleash uh, another strike from that side of our body. We want to be nice and balanced. All right, 15 seconds. Pick it up. Nice guys. All right. Next, uh, next round we'll focus on the green teeth. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna move to the rear teeth and the both of them. So for the first minute, what I want to do is focus on my balance, focus on this lead part of my body, and just like the job, use it to keep someone at bay in a relatively safe way. Okay. And making sure I'm hitting um, the bag, the ball of my foot. So here we go. Muay Thai stance, nice and light. Now with my lead hand, what I'm doing is long guard. I'm keeping someone at bay. So long guard is when you have an arm outstretched, almost like a jab, but it's very defensive in nature. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm push kicking, right? I'm kind of uh, lighter, my lead leg, exhaling, and stopping the bag immediately again with my, my lead teep, lead push kick and using the ball of my foot. Have you guys face the same direction as I am? Now make sure you use your hips. Don't just use all leg like that. Okay, it's lazy and it's more work actually. You want to use your hips. You have more power in your hips. Now I'm hitting for the meat of the bag, okay? You want to aim for your opponent's midsection, the sternum, or actually even on their hips. If they're going to kick you, you can actually stop their kick by push kicking them and actually make them fall down. If someone's coming at you, um, coming forward at you, a good technique to do is do a push kick right at their hips and it'll make them fall down or stop them in the tracks. Notice I'm keeping my chin down the whole time. Even when I'm leaning back slightly to do this kick, my chin is tucked, always protected. One minute left. Now I'm saving my gas because I'm breathing a lot. And I'm not holding my breath when I'm doing this. You notice what my hands are doing too. Okay? I'm being defensive when I'm throwing this, this push kick. I'm dropping my arm, letting it relax a little bit with the counterbalance. Also doing long guard while I'm blocking to my rear. 
all just knees. Okay, last 20 seconds. Let's just stay here, nice and balanced. So notice I'm being really efficient. I'm not moving around both feet. My right foot is planted nice and strong. And I'm just doing my lead teeps. Good. Okay, the next round we'll incorporate the rear teep. And then uh, for the last minute, we're gonna do a burnout. Just teep on both sides like we're walking in the park. Okay, so the rear teep is slightly different in that we're engaging more, more of our foot to make contact. There's a little more power in it and to get a little more distance and power, we can actually finish uh, on our planting foot, our leaf foot on the ball of our feet. So kind of getting our tippy toes as we finish this kick. I'll do all the variations. So same thing, I just want you to kick, right? Now I'm using like, not much effort at all. I'm doing is stepping forward, engaging my hip, hitting with almost my entire foot. You can even hit, pretend you're hitting with your heel. But more of a heel kick. And if you want to get a little more height on it, uh, out of it, you can actually, you can go on the your tippy toes as you finish. So move around a little bit. So this is really good kick, probably the best kick to do in a self-defense scenario. If someone's coming after you, straight at you, you unleash a straight rear right to their body. Knock the wind out of them, keeps them at a distance. You have a really accurate, fast rear push kick. That's a powerful thing. Think about your knee coming up first. I'm not thinking about my foot coming up. If I do that, I'm doing some, some awkward kick, which they can see, right? My knee comes up first, a little faster. More times as this, then we'll go both feet. Ten more seconds. Today. Okay, now I'm gonna go. Front teep, rear teep, back and forth like I'm, I'm walking. So nice and easy. So we're working on our accuracy. I'm trying to hit the middle of the bag, and as it swings back, I'm intercepting. Okay, and I'm not doing happy feet where I'm moving everywhere. Staying nice and strong. My step down is now my anchor point. Okay, when I'm posting with, when I do the other kick. And I'm using my hips, knees coming up. I'm just like taking a nice walk in the park with push kicks. And depending on how big your bag is, mine's 100 pounds. It's gonna be a nice workout pushing a 100 pound bag or 80 pound bag back and forth at home. We're almost there. Yeah. Okay, last round. We're going to incorporate everything we just did. We're going to be moving around, um, adding our straight punches and having it tied together with our push kicks. Setting up our push kick with punches and setting up our punches with push kicks. Okay. And we're not going to stand in one place. We're going to move around the bag as much as we can. So, the beginning of a round, uh, when you're sparring or fighting, you don't want to come blazing with your rear strikes, right? So I'm going to start probing like we guys have been doing, just with my jab. Get them thinking about always something high. Use that to set up um, a push kick right to the body. As the bag or your partner or target swings back at you, that's when I can intercept it with a push kick. 
rear push kick or rear punch. So majority of my strikes are the lead strikes, right? Saving the power of my rear strike or the power of my rear teeth for that moment when I want to deliver the knockout or a blow that will stun to the body or to the head. Notice how right there I faked the push kick, came back with the punch. So you can do that. You get your opponent, think about a tips coming, think a tips coming, think a tips coming. Just kick. Just doing straight strikes, jabs, crosses, lead teep, rear teep. Always moving around, not letting the bag crowd me. Almost there. Once in a while, let out that big power strike. Give you a big cross or big teep. When I throw a strike, I'm not standing in the same place. I'm moving right after. Try and move right after you throw a strike. Don't just stand there and enjoy your work, but move. When I finish a cross, especially, I want to move out. Because I'm more exposed when I finish that cross, I want to move away. Okay? You don't want your head to be in the center line. Move your head off the center line when you land a strike. Try to pick it up now. Last round. Last 20 seconds. Win that round. Use all your strikes. Push kicks, jabs, crosses. Pick it up. Use some flurries. Burn it up. All right. All right, guys, let's wrap up the cool down. We'll stretch the old part of our body. So let's line our backs now. And I'm just gonna roll it out on a rock. So I'm gonna put my hands behind my legs. Just roll it out. Try and roll on each side of your spine. That long strip of muscle. be a big ball, three minutes. So it's always good to stretch uh, after you do a workout to prevent injury. Also heals the muscle faster. And while you're warm right now, it's the best time to stretch. Okay, now lay down there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold on to your hamstring, straighten your leg and draw little circles with your toes in the sky. Okay, straighten your leg even more, pull it closer towards you and across your body. You're going to extend the opposite arm and look in that direction. Now you're going to feel a lot of tension in your lower, your lower back, your lumbar. Try and take nice deep breaths and release all that tension. If you're lucky, you'll hear a bunch of cracks. I just felt three or four right there. That's good. You want to release all that tension in your lower back. All right, now once you feel like you release some of that tension, we're gonna draw five big circles in the sky. So we're gonna swing our legs down, out, up, and over. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, same thing, other leg now. We're gonna grab the Left leg, pull it close towards you and draw little circles in the sky. Go both ways. Pull it closer towards your body, straighten it out and across your body. Now extend the opposite arm and look in that direction. Try and release all that tension in your lumbar, your lower back. I can feel it right here. 
I was doing jiu-jitsu yesterday. I was rolling pretty hard with a big 300-pound guy. So that was fun. Now my body's paying for it. All right, draw five big circles in the sky. Here's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. Ah, good job, you guys. All right, let's roll it up. Let's go to the Spider-Man squat. Mm. Right now, your hips should be pretty loose. So, let's stick our foot out on our heel. Try to sit down on your butt. Mm. Switch. Feet together. And let's just roll it up nice and slow. Reach up. Kind of lean to each side. Ah. All right, guys. Good job. Hope you enjoyed this solo bag class.